Hey guys, it's your boy Ajne and today we're talking about the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but eight months later, let's go. So this has been my main phone now for the last eight months, which was when it was initially released. And today I'm just gonna do a raw and honest review. Now for me, you can tell whether a phone's good or not by the main five subjects, and that's battery life, speed, durability, the screen, and the camera. So let's start with battery life. The iPhone 14 Pro Max does have a good battery life. I've had the phone for eight months now and it does last the whole day, which is expected. I wouldn't really leave it unplugged at night to have the same battery for two days. It just wouldn't last that long. And there's a lot of people that did say when the 14 Pro Max came out that the 13 Pro Max had a better battery life than the 14 Pro Max. And it's true, but it's also not true. Let's put it this way. When the 14 Pro Max came out, the always on display didn't go black. It was just a dimmed version of your current like lock screen. And that took up more battery than it did if it was to go black. So an alternate solution and the easy solution was to just turn off the always on display. That would save you battery and probably make it better than the 13 Pro Max. And another thing that would have took up more battery life per se would have been the screen brightness because the screen had a higher brightness capacity compared to the previous iPhone. So I could see where they're coming from with that, but I've never had a 13 Pro Max to go off, but I'm pretty sure if you turn off the always on display, the 14 Pro Max will outlast the 13 Pro Max. I mean, if you want to see a battery test, you can type that in on YouTube, but I've had the phone for eight months and there's no problem with the battery. So the one negative I have to say, maybe it's just my phone. Maybe it's the way I take care of my battery health, but I had an iPhone 12 and the battery health on that is better than my iPhone 14 Pro Max now. And I've only had this phone for a year, whereas the 12, I've had it for two years and the battery life is better. Currently the battery life on this is 91%, which is crazy. It hasn't even been 12 months yet. And I feel like I've been on TikTok and I've seen a few other people say the same thing, but maybe we're just not good at taking care of our battery health, so. On to the next subject. Now this is probably the first major difference you'll notice if you're coming from an iPhone which is not a pro version and that's the screen. The smoothness on this screen because it has the pro motion display which is basically 120 hertz. The re It's just too smooth like it just looks better it makes you feel better comparing it to a non-pro phone you just have a 60 hertz and if you do go into power saving mode on the pro you will be clocked down back to 60 hertz and you'll be able to tell the difference which is why i probably rarely ever go into battery saving mode power saving mode also with the screen the brightness goes up to 2000 nits whereas on the previous iphone 13 pro max it only goes up to 1200 which is a crazy difference but i've had the phone out in the sun I know it's direct sunlight, but I've had it directly out in the sun and I still struggled to see my screen a bit. I said, whoa. Then I thought back to my previous phones and I was like, I couldn't see my phone at all. I would have to literally, I would literally have to like block out the sun. Even though I thought the viewing experience on my iPhone 14 Pro Max was kind of difficult, I couldn't imagine what it's like on the 13 Pro Max and the previous generation of iPhones. So with that being said, I do have to say the screen is a big, big positive. On to the next subject. Okay, we're gonna keep this basic. And personally, in my experience, the speed of an iPhone is good at pretty much every level past the XR. Unless you're gaming, of course, but if you still play games on your mobile device, it's kind of weird, but each to their own. But the iPhone 14 Pro Max is blazing fast. I literally had this discussion with my friend the other day and he said, why don't you close your apps, bro? Like I was closing my apps and I was just going and going and going. And I said, well, first of all, they need to have a close all feature, but my iPhone doesn't really seem to slow down. So I never close my apps and the battery life is good. So I just never close my apps. Maybe I'm just spoiled at this point. But other than that, if you upgrade an iPhone from like the previous two generations, you probably won't notice a difference. It's only when you're coming from, let's say the iPhone XR or below to the iPhone 14, that's when you'll see, oh, this is a pretty fast phone. And if we're talking in terms of benchmarks, which I don't really like to do because each iPhone is better than the previous iPhone, but only by a little bit. And it's only when you make major jumps, you'll see major differences. But I'll just throw the benchmarks up on the screen so you guys can have your peace of mind. But speed is something that I don't really focus on with iPhones because iOS is so optimized and every iPhone is so optimized. It's only when you're talking about Android smartphones, 
is when it can get a bit difficult because some Androids come with bloatware, slows down the phone instantly from you opening the box. And just generally over time, Androids just seem to slow down for me and apps even crash. I don't know, I haven't used an Android for a few years, but that's just how I remember my Android experience. Now we're moving on to durability. And I know we all treat our phones differently, but for me, at first I did treat it like it was the best thing on earth. But after a month or two, everyone knows that feeling wears off. I started throwing my phone on my bed when I'm at the gym. I just kind of drop it from a little distance, not too high so it will crack. And I have dropped my phone a couple of times inside and outside. And I don't wear a case anymore just because I can't find a case that like looks good, feels good and lasts long. I had a case previously, but it started to rip. So I took it off. Haven't wore a case for five months now, I want to say. The screen isn't broken. The camera is perfectly fine. All I would say is I do have some scuffs around that, like the rim of the phone, the outside of the phone, which is fine for me. I do have phone insurance. It's not Apple Care. I did Slack. If you guys know my Samsung story, I had a Samsung S8 or S9, I don't know. I fell over, the phone's in my right pocket. I fell on my left and the phone broke. I've just never gone back since. I just don't remember when I've ever cracked an iPhone. Like iPhones don't crack for me. And I've seen people with cracked iPhones and they still work. I've seen iPhones with ink on them and they still work, it's crazy. But yeah, I think durability on this iPhone 14 Pro Max is crazy insane. Last but not least, the camera. Now the camera on this phone is amazing. I've literally found myself using more of the camera app than like Snapchat or Instagram than I previously did, mainly because the camera is so good. I kind of want the best quality. Whereas the previous iPhones, which I came from my iPhone 12, but if I took the picture on Snapchat or Instagram compared to the camera app, there wasn't really a difference. So I didn't need to use the camera app, but now I do see the difference. And one thing I do have to say is when the iPhone 14 Pro Max did first come out, everyone did have this issue with the camera where it would just randomly start to shake and vibrate. And I can't remember clearly, but I think you could feel it on the phone as well and it was just this major thing going around, but Apple fixed it with a software update within like one to two months. If even that, it was very fast. Now, that issue only happened with third-party apps, so you could go into the camera app and just be fine. Maybe that's why I use the camera app more now subconsciously, but Apple's fixed it now, and I'm sure there's people out there just using the third-party camera apps regardless anyway. And the major difference with the iPhone 14 Pro Max compared to the previous iPhones for like many, many years, they've upgraded from 12 megapixels to 48 megapixels. And as you heard me say previously, the camera is amazing. The detail it could capture, and it's way better in low light than any of the previous iPhones. I do have to say though, it isn't the best. I've seen Google in low light, and boy, that phone is amazing. The video quality is awesome. As always, the back camera is the best. They also added autofocus to the front facing camera of the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and they kind of messed it up in the beginning, but they did fix it with a software update. When people used to open the camera app, including myself, I was out of focus. So if you wanted a quick selfie, sometimes it wasn't as quick as you intended it to be, but it's fixed now. Now the question is, should you still buy an iPhone 14 Pro Max nine months later? And the answer is, honestly, it's totally up to you. But for me, if you are on the iPhone 12 or below, I would upgrade immediately if I had the opportunity. Only because I don't feel like the iPhone 15 is going to be a massive difference. And if it is a massive difference, I feel like a lot of people won't like it. And the iPhone 14 Pro Max is very good as it is. And if I really had to pick something I really didn't like about this phone, and it may or may not be a deal breaker to you, and it hasn't been mentioned in the video so far, it is the Dynamic Island. Now I do have to say, it is still kind of buggy. The Dynamic Island sometimes will keep the notification in the dynamic island instead of just getting rid of it after it's been there for a second or two which is kind of annoying but if you do tap the dynamic island it will go away or you can swipe on the dynamic island and the notification will go away but in the rare occasion it doesn't and you'd have to open the app which it's coming from and then it would close itself but that is on rare rare occasions but the positives definitely outweigh the negatives on the dynamic island like it hides a bunch of system notifications which you just 
don't really want to see but want to be aware of like one huge notification is low battery it literally will just pop up on this thin dynamic island instead of having half of your screen saying low battery not very distracting so you can miss it if you focus on something else and it doesn't really take up much of your screen you don't know it's like a hole in your display it's nothing like that trust me it's more beneficial than negative in my opinion so all in all my experience with the iphone 14 pro max is great i'd recommend you guys get one if you can't really get a 14 pro max get a refurbished 13 pro max but if you're still rocking an iphone 12 and below man it's time for an upgrade and trust me you're gonna love it as always if you guys enjoyed the video leave a like comment and subscribe peace